Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to install Open Media Vault on the B-Link EQ12 N100 low power consumption mini PC. Let's jump into it. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and boot from the USB disk. And here on my Ventoy disk, I do have Open Media Vault 6.5. That is the latest version with an ISO image available. The current version is 6.9, but they don't release a, an ISO image for every version of Open Media Vault. So we'll go ahead and select that. Boot in normal mode. And we've got two options here, install and advanced options. We're going to say install. English, United States, American English. And this should go fairly quick once it loads everything up. So what's currently on this machine is I had Ubuntu on the NVMe disk and I had Batacera on the SATA SSD. All right, so system has multiple network controllers. Choose the one to use as the primary interface. Uh, if possible, the first connected network interface found has been selected. So hopefully that's the one with the lights on on the back of the machine. So we'll select that. Worst case scenario, we switch to the other port. And we go through the copy process. Okay. We are going to call this OMV-BLINK. Root password. and Eastern time zone, and we'll try this again. More than one storage device has been detected. This looks better. Continue. Machines firmware has started the installer in UEFI mode, but it looks like the existing operating system may be already installed using BIOS compatibility mode. If you continue to install Debian in UEFI mode, it might be difficult to reboot the machine into any BIOS mode operating systems later. Uh, we are going to say no to that. Okay, so now we are going to install the base system on the 512 gig NVMe drive. And this looks like it's going better than it did before. Okay, here we go. United States. Debian.org. No proxy. And it should pull down a few more updates. Get apt configured. Installing the Grub bootloader. Installation complete. Continue. And in a moment here, we will be pulling out the USB stick and hopefully getting to a command prompt. All righty. And it looks like we've got a booted system. So now I'm going to grab the IP address and I'll switch the browser and we will see about doing initial configuration and getting some updates run. All right, here we are on the login screen and you log in with admin and open media vault is the default password. And here, as you can see, we've got some requests to donate to the project. 
and it's telling us that the dashboard has not been configured and we need to go to the settings page. So we will throw some things on here. Uh, let's see, file systems, load average, memory, network interfaces, smart, services, system information, time, updates available, and uptime, sure. Um, save, and we should have to apply this, I'm assuming, or maybe not. Okay, so as you can see, we've got updates available, uptime is three minutes. The only service available currently is SSH. The network interface is up, and there's the IP address. Uh, this is since we made it a little bit larger. Um, was cut off a bit, but that's all right. Load average is basically nothing. So we are going to go to system and update management, updates and install updates. Confirm, yes. And this will get our updates moving for us. And this should, when we restart, it should get us up to version 6.9, which will be great. So while we're waiting, uh, Debian, is the the back end for open media vault it's so this is running the 6.1 kernel this is likely going to run quite well on this little b-link system so again to, to reiterate um while you probably don't want this b-link for windows you throw something like open media vault on it install something like zero tier or netbird or tail scale it makes an inexpensive nas box you could stick at somebody else's house and do remote backups without having to pay for a cloud-based service you are effectively building your own cloud and given the low power nature of this device if your friend or family member has a solid internet connection, mainly download speed on their end, you'll be golden. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and say close on this. We're going to apply the changes and say yes. And in case you don't recognize it, that little uh, stopwatch looking thing that was displayed on the screen, that is right from Amiga OS. From back in the day. Some people will recognize that and appreciate that information. So we are now on version 6.9.1. Just for good measure, I am going to reboot the system. All right, we're back to our login screen. Again, admin and open Media Vault. And we are back up and running. Just to make sure, we're going to check update management one more time and refresh that. And we are up to date. So there are, of course, different things you can do with this. Uh, you can force a secure connection. It is going to use network time server. And we can add our time zone. And I'm in... America, Detroit, because you don't have to scroll down to <laughs> New York, <laughs> so or Toronto for that matter. We're gonna save that and apply it. Yes. Okay, power management. Settings, when pressing the power button, it will power off. That's fine. Schedule tasks, we don't have anything there yet plugins. We've got all kinds of things we can do here. And this will be part of a separate video. So we'll go ahead and collapse system. So services, these are the main four that we can configure. Of course, we can add users and groups as well. 
And there are some diagnostic things on here too. System information, OMV B-Link, processors Intel N100 on a 6.1 kernel. Uptime is three minutes and the time and date are correct. If we look at performance statistics, we can look at CPU. It doesn't appear that we've got anything yet. Here we go. Um, we're not even hitting 40% on CPU usage, disk usage. It's all good. There are different options here. And so this is really where I wanted to stop with this first video. We've gone from having a machine that had a different operating system on it to reformatting it, installing Open Media Vault, and performing the updates. So in the next video, you can expect that we will get the SATA disk configured as a storage location. We will turn on one of the storage protocols or possibly multiple of the storage protocols and test those out. And one of the things I'm interested in testing is since this has a actually two 2.5 gig network cards in it uh, and my Mac mini has a 10 gig network card in it, they should talk to each other at 2.5 gigs across the network because they are plugged into the same 2.5 gig switch. So this is going to be a fun little test. Uh, currently my other machines, uh, other NAS machines on my network are only one gigabit. And so this will give me at least a chance to test out uh, throughput from the Mac mini to a device that can handle uh, faster ingress. All right, that'll bring us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Do what you need to do below the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.